Phoenix, the new box is here, and is it top tier? Well, we're about to find out. We're about to see what's coming. I already see Abomination's Prison, so that tells me we're getting Unchained. So let's read into the cards. Raviel, Lord of Phantasm, Shivering Scraper. Okay, cannot be normal summon to set. Must be special summon by attributing three monsters. You can only use each of the effects of Shivering Scraper once per turn. I thought this card was like, it's some like Sacred Beast memes in Master Duel. Uh, quick effect, you can discard this card and target one Raviel you control. The rest of the turn, its attack becomes double. And it can attack all your opponent's effects once each. So, like, what's the point of summoning this? Oh, also, this card's in your graveyard, you contribute one monster, add it to your hand. So, like, if you summon a Sacred Beast, this thing could, like, just, like, OTK you with 8,000 attack out of nowhere. So, like, right out of nowhere, you could just die to this thing. That's hilarious. So you're going to have to be careful of what you leave in attack mode. Because otherwise, you could just, like, die to this. That's hilarious. Okay. So, really, really cool. Oh, oh. I didn't mean to do that. Sorry. Uh, really, really cool. Uh, yeah. Okay. The, the, the Sacred Beast has got me intrigued. All right. We missed, we missed the raw cog. Will, it, will Sean Cog with the Sacred Beast? That's the real question. Uh, Fright for Patrick. Okay. This is like the, pre, the pre-branded stable before they got Quem and, and um, Blazing Cartesia and starting to run all the new stuff. You know, more of a complete branded package. They used to play this because this just makes Guardian Chimera that much easier. Uh, it basically added Edge and, and Polly from deck to end. Nothing, uh, this is a really good card for the archetype, obviously, because you just get you know, consistency piece, and it's a plus one activation. So it's really, really good. Uh, I wonder how much of an impact this card's going to have for Fright First, but we'll have to see the rest of the support they're getting. Abomination's Prison. Oh, this just adds an Unchained from deck to end, and if destroyed by a card effect. Oh, even your own. Okay, so if you destroy this by your own Unchained effects, and you can special summon one Unchained monster from your deck. Oh, we're getting... Okay. Depending on how much support we get, Unchained can be very good in Duel Links. I, I think it's, uh, well, if I remember the R type right, because I saw the de the R type a lot in Master Duel. I guess I played a lot against it. The, the, if I remember the R type right, the only thing that kind of would hurt it a bit, maybe should all, because of its natural play style of Winda and then them not being able to special summon as much as they want. But we'll see. We'll see. I want to see all the support we get. We also kind of need to get the Link 2 Unchained Soul of Rage, which allows you to take your opponent's crap. Uh, but this has been one of the archetypes that when it comes to the game, I was looking really forward to getting. So I'm definitely going in on this box. Um, getting three copies. And we're already almost, already at 7.2k gems and looking to expand that. So that's looking really, really good for us. Okay. Spirit, opening spirit of the gate. But, uh, oh, just to go back over this again. Abomination's Prison is really good because... It, you can add any Unchained from deck to end, and you can also destroy itself and then float to an Unchained out of the deck. Uh, and you can use each effect once per turn. So what that means is if you open up two of these, you can activate one, search, then pop the other one and get a summon. So it's never like a brick to open up more than one of these. Opening of the Spirit Gates. When this card is activated, add Uriah, Haman, or Raviel from deck to end. So this adds any one of the three Sacred Beast cards from deck to hand. Okay, this card was like the Sprite Staple because you would add Dark Beckoning Beast or a card that specifically mentions them. So you would add Dark Beckoning Beast, the Special Summon Blue, Special Summon, then go and Special Summon uh, Jet and blah, 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 blah. Do your old Sprite Life. Red, after that you can Summon Red or whatever. It, it, you get what I mean. So it's not, it's, it, it's important unimportant there, but this was basically the sprite staple. Uh, if you played Sacred Beast Sprite. Once per turn, you can discard one card, special summon one fiend monster with zero attack, and zero defense from your graveyard. Wait, they spoke graveyard wrong. They wrote, It says, if you guys can see it, it says grave, grard, graveyard uh, from Dan. Um, I can add will continue a spell. Would Ra play this? I to get back, I don't think so. I mean, they could end back like True Sun God or something, but yeah, I don't think they would play this. Uh, you can add one continuous spell. You can 
only open it up, one, uh, only activate one opening in the spirit gates per turn. So this card is really good. I didn't take a good look at the Sacred Beast skill, but you basically activate this. You search one of these three uh, guys, and then then you can, uh, if you control level 10, then you get to add um, one uh, continuous spell from grave to hand. So, yeah, you can add, depending on, you can add the other Sacred Beast continuous spells. I'm interest, intrigued in the spirit gates, so I'll have to give this deck a try. Uh, for sure. Fright- Ooh, we're getting Cruel Royal. Okay, this card was used in Master Duel and make VFD. <laughs> well, <laughs> we're not having VFD in Duel Mix. Well, at least I hope not. <laughs> I, I greatly hope not, but, they, you know, yeah. Here's a Nugget Beam. Uh, it takes one Edgent Monster and one Fluffle. If this card is Fusion Summon, you can destroy one card on both players' fields. So, automatically, it just pops the card in your field, pops the card in your opponent's field. Uh, once per turn, you can target one fusion monster you control. Send one fright per card from your deck to, or extra deck to the graveyard. Uh, and if you do the targeted monster gains attack equal to half its attack. Okay, so that's really, it's, it's, it's a much better fusion monster for them. So, nice. Um, uh, is it enough to make the meta? I don't know. I still think that, you know... Modernly, they don't have a turn one, as to say. I still think that problem still exists. Um, let's take a look at some of their order support. Edge and Scythe. During your opponent's main phase, you can reveal this card in your amp. Fusion summon right for fusion monster from your extra deck using monsters from your and or field as fusion material, including a card in this card in your amp. If right for fusion monster will be destroyed in battle, you can banish this card from your graveyard instead. Okay, so this is really good for the archetype because you can fuse it on your opponent's turn. The only problem with this is it has to be during the main phase, which is kind of annoying because then they can bait you out. Um, as cool as this is, is this just like worse at alls? I don't know. Um, at this point. I mean, this is nice that you can just destroy a card on your opponent's turn. They're going to have to play a lot of defensive cards to kind of keep them alive. They're really good at OTKing your opponent. That's the one thing Frypher really do well. Uh, between going into Tiger, going into... I uh, forget some of their other fusions. Uh, there's like a bigger Tiger. I forget what it's called. But you can let me know in the comments. But yeah. Basically, they're really good at OTKing the opponent. But this is nice for the turn one. Because uh, they can fuse and then pop a card in the field. Yeah. So, good. Okay. Next is Unchained Twins of Rua. Okay. So Rua, you can target one card you controlled. You cannot special summon and destroy the targeted card if you do special summon this card. Now, the nice thing is Unchained uh, kind of play like Tenyi a bit and maybe a mix of like Tenyi and BA where they like destroy your own shit and then float. So you just target one card you control. You cannot special summon except for Fiend, so it locks you in immediately. Special summon this card. And if this card is destroyed by a card effect, you could special summon one Unchained Monster from hand or deck. So if you summon a Rua, you can activate uh, another Unchained, pop it, and then special summon any Unchained from hand or deck. So, again, uh, uh, yeah, so you basically have this on the field, and then you have another Unchained, and you, uh, yeah, you can target uh, one other card you control. You cannot special summon. Yeah, so you can blow up your other Unchains, or you can just, like, blow up any back row or whatever you have. So, like, an Abomination could work, or basically anything else uh, to do that. Yeah, so to special summon this out of hand. So, again, I'm going to go over it one more time. So, basically, if you have a card in the field, yeah, you can destroy it, and then special summon this card from your hand. And then it's destroyed. If this card specifically is destroyed, you can special summon one Unchained Monster from your hand deck. Now, let me think. Okay. Oh my gosh. This is disgusting with the floor. Oh my gosh. If you pop, you can pop the level one. Oh gosh. Summon Sorcery and then revive? Ugh. Oh, that's gross. Um... Yeah. Oh, that's disgusting. Uh, yeah. Unchained is going to threaten to be really, really good, guys. Uh, I think that, like I said, I think the only 
thing in the meta that would kind of slow them down a bit of shit all, but we'll see. We'll see. They, they could still go, they still might be able to go really good going term on him. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. But other than that, like, his tech is gross. I could see this deck being really good with the floor. Okay. So, yeah. So, if this card in the field is destroyed by card effect, blah, 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 you could special summon an unchain. And this can be by your own card effect. So, if you blow this up with, like, Sage de Fleur, then you can get its effect because it will not miss the timing. So, yeah, there you go. Unchained Raikara, Raikia. You can target one card, you control, destroy it, and also you can this person with the fiend. Okay, yeah. Uh, yep. So, you can target one card, control, destroy it, also you can this person except the fiends. If this card in the field is destroyed by card effect, especially someone on chain monster may enter that. Uh, Raikia is probably the worser one because you can't special summon this out of hand. Arua summons itself out of hand, but Raikia is still... It's still solid. This is, like, still really solid, regardless. But the nice thing is... Well, actually, no. This being a quick effect could be nice, too. This is a quick effect, so this has some nice application as well, being a quick effect. Um, yeah. Yeah, so being a quick effect, this could be a nice application to just, you know, respond to whatever your opponent's going to do. So if they were to threaten to do something then to your monsters, then you can do that. So, yeah. This, 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 um, this deck might break, this, well, that's what I said. This deck will probably get the floor hit at some point because I think this deck is nasty with the floor. Can't wait to try it out, but it's going to be nasty with the floor for sure. Unchained Abomination. Link 4. Oh, we're getting Abomination. This card's going to be splashed right into Live Twin. So, like, I can see Live Twin just running this right off the bat. I wonder if somebody's going to play the Fleur Live Twin Unchained. Or something like that. They may not even have to. You can just, like, run the Unchained package by itself. That might be way too big of an engine. Two plus monsters, including a Link. If this card on the field is destroyed by a card effect, except by Unchained Abomination, you can target one card in the field to destroy it. So, including yourself, if you destroy cards in the field, you can target one card in the field to destroy it. So, very, very good. Um, when another monster is destroyed by battle, you can target one card in the field to destroy it during the end phase. Uh, oh, you can target one card in the field to destroy it. Okay. So, if you destroy a monster by battle, or some monster destroyed by battle, then you can target a card in the field to destroy it. Um... If any card on the field is destroyed by card effect, you can target a card in the field and destroy it. During the end phase, you can target one card in the field and destroy it. Um, so it doesn't do any... Well, I should say it doesn't do anything immediately. Uh, but, yeah. So you might want to do, to get the most value out of it, is make Abomination first, and then start popping their board. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so that's probably what you're going to want to do to get the most value out of this. Because then if you activate, like, something like the floor after, like, Saw get the floor afterwards, then you can get, like, more value out of it and then pop more cards in the field. So... Yeah, this card is nice. It's good. Uh, it, it's. I don't want to say it's situational. It's not that situational, but yeah. Nice. Okay, so this is coming for the Dennis skill. Four Ancient Gear monsters must be Fusion Summoned. Cannot be Special Summoned in any ways. Unaffected by Spell or Traps. That's very good. Your opponent can activate effects during the battle phase. So they have to deal with this with a monster effect in the main phase. Now, what do we have as far as monster effects that can deal with it? Uh, well, Rocky can Furious it. Can it not be destroyed? No. So, if you, if they go in the Furious Dragon, Rocky can out this. Um, you'd have to bait them out, because Furious can out it during the main phase. It can't be outed during the battle phase, but, uh, if they, if should all flip up with Resh, like a Squamata, they can out it during the main phase. It, if not, then this thing will, like, literally kill your opponent. It pierces and can attack all your opponent's monsters once each. 
So this card is very, very good, except when your opponent outs it during the main phase or anything like that. Um, yeah. But if they do, I think this is meant to be played with the Dennis skill, more or less. Yeah, with the Dennis skill, that's how people are going to play this. The new one. Sacred Sword is seven stars. Banish one level seven monster. Draw two cards. Okay, so this is just... What deck banishes level seven? I guess Rocket, but like... Eh, you're never really searching the Explorer. But is it earn one if your hand's all engine? I guess you can. Mm, I don't know if Rocket's really going to play this. I'm trying to think of other decks that would play this. What are the level seven decks beside Rocket to be at? I don't know. I'll have to think about it out. Protector, Whelp of Destruction Swordsman. If this is Link Summon, you can send one Destruction Sword. So this can immediately dump the trap. Okay. And you can special summon Buster Blader from your hands. The end of the battle phase, before it controls no monsters, you can target one Buster Blader to the Necro Lair attack and inflict damage to your opponent to equal to half that monster's attack. I mean, I think this card is solely good specifically because of this, the, the effect that sends from deck to grave. Summoning Buster Blade out of the hand is fine. It does help make the fusion, so overall this is a boon for the deck. I don't know how consistent they are going to be able to summon this, though, because most of their turn one plays are summoning Welp by itself. Like, I don't know how, how often they're going to be able to get this on the field that quickly. So, we'll see. It, it might be... It might be um, Maybe they start playing Minecon to like take your things and then make this and then send the turn two. So it's definitely a boom for the deck, I would say. Okay, okay, this we already have. This we have. This we have. These are not new. Um, Unchained Soul of Rage. Oh, we're getting rage. Okay, so this card is insane. Uh, yeah, this card allows you to link with your opponent's monsters. Uh, and two monsters, including an Unchained Soul. During your opponent's main phase, quick effect. So if you make this turn one, you can steal their monsters, by the way. So turn one, you're going to make this, and you're going to steal your opponent's monsters. And it's going to be really easy for you to make with the floor. Just got to be able to figure out the best turn one for it. You can target a special summon monster your opponent controls immediately after this effect resolves. Link summon one dark monster by using that monster and this card you control as material. Now, keep in mind, that's is that monster. Um, so, again, like, well, well, no. If they book it, you won't be able to link with it anyway. So that's irrelevant here. Okay. But, uh, so you can't fully resolve the link summon. Uh, yeah, but this card is really, really good. Uh, it just takes your opponent's monster for free. So the minute they special summon, this thing is turned on. And then you can go into a Link 3 off the bat. Or unless they're Link Summoning, then you can make a Link 4. So obviously this card is really good. And note that this is any Dark Link monster. You can make Deco Talker. If your opponent's playing Orcus, you can technically make Galateo. Although that's probably not going to happen. But you could. But you can go into any Dark monster you want. So this is really, really good. Also, if this card in the field is destroyed by card effect, you can target one Fiend monster in your graveyard. Add it to your hand. Jeez, this card is cracked. Holy shit. Yeah, I think this deck's gonna be really good. Really top tier. Like, tier 2, tier 1. Maybe they're not. The tier 2 might be, like, I don't know. This deck is probably tier 1. If This deck is definitely a tier 1 deck, in my mind, with, with the floor. This deck is definitely tier 1. Might end up competing for the best deck. And I'm not kidding. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I, I think the only thing that's kind of holding this deck back might be Shadol. Going second could be hard if you all the plays you want to do is special summonable. Then a window doesn't just shut you down. You're going to have to play text to out window. But, man, I think this deck has a chance to be really, really good. I'm not even kidding. Like, like the best deck, potentially. This deck could be compete for the best deck in the game. Really good stuff. Like, Rage is disgusting. Okay. Unchained Soul of Anguish. Two plus monsters. I definitely want to get Cog with this deck. Even though we cogged on the main account, I'm going to have to figure out somebody's soul that I'm going to have to take to Cog with this. Uh, two monsters, including an Unchained Soul monster. Okay. So this take, this is a Link 3. Uh, you can target one face-up monster your opponent controls. Immediately Link Summon. After this effect resolves, Link Summon one Dark Link monster. 
Okay, so link three. Uh, by using only the opponent's monster and discard you control its material. Okay. So again, like I said, the rage can only take special summons, which is fine because it's the majority of the things you're going to take anyway. Anguish can take any monster. So again, but the only thing with anguish is anguish is not a quick effect. So keep that in mind. If you were to uh, make this turn one and you go into anguish with rage, anguish is not a quick effect. Um, the thing with rage, though, that's really good going second is once you use this uh, and you link off their monster and go into anguish, then you can anguish link off another monster. So really, really good, obviously. Also, this is destroyed. You can target a fiend, engrave it to your amp. So yeah, this is more recursive. Reminds me of BA, like where... If anything dies, you add back something else. I think BA do a better job at it than Unchained because you are able to uh, summon it like with Seer immediately, but they're all like Dante effects. I mean, well, BA do it better because the monsters themselves recur, like Seer and Graph, with well, not Graph with dual links, but Seer and Libet summon out to extend, but they, they, these are all like Dante's basically where you just add them back if they die and whatever not. Although Dante's a little bit more recursive because you, when it's sent, you just add back. But same idea. Uh, Unchained Soul of Disaster. Okay, so you're going to summon these out of the deck by using like the level 3s to pop something and then bring these out. So, really easy to summon. Um, gains 300 attack, reach Unchained in the graveyard. Okay, you're not going to really be attacking with this. Um, you get target one face up monster your opponent controls immediately after this effect resolves. Link summon one dark link monster using this card to control the opponent's monster. Okay, again, it was so many removal tools. Oh my gosh. Like, like as far as removal, this deck is like loaded with removal tools. Uh, so like, you can just take your opponent's monster with this and immediately link summon. If this card is destroyed by battle or by card effect, you target un one unchained monster in your graveyard, special summon it. So if they get rid of this, summon a dude. Uh, abominate, Abominable Unchained Soul. You can only special summon this once per turn. If card you control is destroyed by Battle of Card Effect, you can special summon this for your M. Yeah. You definitely are playing this because if you destroy a card on your field, you want to special summon this, including your Deflora stuff. So if you make the... Oh, this is an 8 for Ding too. Oh my god. 3,000 attack. This card is crazy. I think you might. Hmm. I wonder if you play three of this. You probably do. I don't know. But you 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 destroy a card in your field. Destroy a card. Yeah. I did it again. Okay. You destroy a card in your field. Destroy a card in the opponent's field. And then where are you? Yeah. And then bang. This card comes out. Uh. Yeah. If this card is special, you can discard one card, destroy one card in the field. Very good. Once we during the end phase, this card was, it was destroyed because it was sent there. You could special summon this, but place it on the bottom of the deck when it leaves the field. So this card is very, very good. Uh, because this can be used with Saga de Fleur. Really, really good stuff. Unchained Twin Sarama. You can target one unchained card in your graveyard. Except Sarama, set it to your field, and destroy one card you control. If this card... Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, are they going to be playing this? I don't I don't know. Is this kind of... Well, no, no, no. Well, actually... Hmm. Maybe this is a one-of. Because if you activate Unchained... Abominable... Whatever the search card is. What's the search card? Uh, Abomination's Prison. Then you probably search the Rama. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So, this could potentially then uh, add that back and then destroy a card you control. And then you can use the other effect of it. So, yeah, you probably play one Sarama. Because if you run Sarama, you go Sarama, reset, back, prison, and then you could special summon out if you have it. Where is it? Uh, where's the one I wanted to bring up? You could special summon out a Ruha, and then a Ruha can special summon itself, pop that prison, and summon out of the deck. 
So that might be a combo that you might want to explore. Okay. So I think that's pretty much every... Oh, no, there's two trap cards. Can this add the traps or can it only add a monsters? Unchain card. Okay. So it can add the traps as well. So this does searches the traps. Okay. Escape from the Unchain. Target one Unchained monster you control and one card in the field. Destroy both. Okay. Nice. If this is destroyed by a card effect, you can special summon it Unchained from the deck. Okay. So this could search that. And then you can, um, yeah, you can search that and then set it and then destroy this. So if you already have like a Ruha or Ru Ruhan and then you can activate them, search this, destroy that, destroy that, and summon one out of the deck um, automatically. So that's one way to get your combo started is to use escaped. So this could get your combo going instantaneously. Although, I don't think this is going to be the way they do it. I think what they're going to end up doing is popping the Deflore cards. Unless you already have, uh, like, Sog in hand. So this could be something that you may want to start off with. I think you definitely play this. Uh, Abominable Chamber of the Unchained. Special 7, 1 monster, Unchained monster for your Anther Graveyard. This card set is destroyed by card effects. Special 7, 1 chain from the deck. So they all do that. So they just all do it. I wonder if you just play 3 MST at that point, though. It's like, you just blow up your own crap. Dark Hole is going to probably be played. Needle Stealing, stuff like that. Because Dark Hole can just, like, yeah, you just probably play 3 Dark Hole in this deck. Because uh, you just blow up your own crap. And then float to other things. Oh, my God. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to try out this deck. Yeah, we're, we're definitely, I'm definitely really excited for Unchained. I think if there's any deck I'm super duper excited for, it's that. Flying Fur, to me, is like, eh. It's it's okay. I, I, I like the fusion summoning playstyle, but I'm more like on the Shadol side than this. I'll definitely give it a shot, but overall, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I don't know how good Frightfur is going to be. Uh, it might be good with the floor, and I'm not looking at the floor properly. It could be really good with the floor, actually, uh, as I go with second the floor deck. That could be really strong as Frightfur. So definitely something you don't want to overlook. I think it could be good. I was like, but I don't know if Fright Fur is going to be top tier because I don't know if the turn one is still good enough in this matter, to be honest with you. I don't know if the turn one is good enough, but we'll have to see. So I think Fright Fur could be more on the edge of like a roguish deck. We'll have to see. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, uh, I think that, uh, I think that like Fright Fur got some really good support, definitely. Like Patchwork is insane. And you also got access to, um, where is it? Uh, what is it? Uh, where is it? Oh, it also got it all. You we got we got um, fright for patchwork and we got scythe, which is good. Again, the only problem again I see is that scythe is only a pot one if you summon it's a it's a crew whale. So like, uh, like it's okay. Oh, I didn't look at. Oh, there's two more that I have to read off. Uh, yeah, like, you have Kraken, but Kraken, Kraken's nice going second because you could send it, and then this can make two attacks, so it's going to be nice going second. Um, and yeah, this is, this is okay. Like, this, uh, uh, Fright for Night Vickery is okay. It doesn't really, uh, do a whole ton. All this, it, it protects it from being targeted, but again, uh... It only gains the attack during your turn and not during your opponent. So I, I, I think this card's okay. I think they're okay. I think Frypher's okay. I still think it lacks a turn one. I think it could be insane going second, but again, like, I still think turn one is kind of like up in the air, but at least by itself. Uh, I think the, the deck that's going to really shine out of this box, Unchained, uh, Sacred Beast might do something with, with, with the new skills, so we're going to have to take a look and see at that. I think Unchained has a shot to be the best deck, though. I think it definitely has a shot to be one of the best decks, if not the best deck in the game. Uh, so the box is good. It's definitely good. Um, a Sacred Beast, I'm, I'm intrigued in. Fright First, I'm intrigued in as a going second deck. Unchained is probably the deck I'm looking forward to playing the most, because I think the deck is insane. I think the deck's toughest matchup might be Shadal going second. They're going to need outs to win them, but other than that, like this deck is really cracked going second so yeah okay so that's my box review um 
uh, yeah, that's my box review, and yeah, we'll see you uh, guys next time. Uh, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. If I'm not live tonight, it will be tomorrow morning. Uh, with the tomorrow, well, maybe not in the morning, but tomorrow night. Um, I want to get a do a cog climb or at least play Unchained. So, yeah, one of the two nights, expect Unchained gameplay. That's all I'm gonna say. Okay, talk to you guys soon. Bye, YouTube. Remember, like, comment, subscribe.